This is an intercooler. This is water. This is now an air to water intercooler. Today, we're going to discuss how to build your own air water intercooler setup for about $350 that'll support 600 horsepower. Stay tuned. My name is Andrew, and welcome to Budget Outlaws. So, most of you are familiar with air to air intercoolers. It's what we think of when we talk about intercoolers. And this car has one, this car has one, this car has one, this car does not have one, and definitely this car. Intercoolers are needed to cool the charge air temperature after compressing it from a turbocharger. It's kind of the opposite of what you see whenever you use a can of compressed air and the can gets very, very cold because you're releasing compressed air. Um, the first turbo cars didn't have intercoolers and as a result they had a very uh, bad re uh, reputation for being unreliable or being poor performance and um, it's something that did change over time but it took a long time to recover. But soon manufacturers started to use intercoolers and would even advertise that in the branding of the car. One of the biggest issues with intercoolers is that they take up a lot of real estate, especially the plumbing that has to be run to the front of the car in most cases. Um, and what that long plumbing does for turbo lag. As manufacturers tried to package more and more inside the engine bay, these engineers looked towards different ways of packaging the intercoolers and increasing efficiency and having a more consistent air inlet temperature. And that's where air to water intercoolers come into play. Now, an air to water intercooler is the same basic thing as an air to air intercooler, except that instead of air passing through to cool the charge air, the charge air, it's going to be water that passes through, and generally they are um, encased in like aluminum, and there's water jackets that are on both sides that pump in cold water and pump out hot water or warm water. Now, because water is such a good heat sink, you don't need nearly as large of an intercooler and the intercooler itself can be substantially smaller. Um, water versus air, there's a lot of science behind it, but essentially it's about 30 times more efficient um, in absorbing heat and whenever you factor all of the surface area there's quite substantially larger numbers. So there are many manufacturers that are currently utilizing an air to water intercooler system such as this one and this one and even this one however not this one so that's enough background as far as what an actual air to water intercooler system is. Let's get into what do you need to be able to build your own air to water intercooler system on the cheap. The first thing you need is an appropriately sized intercooler. You want to look at what the maximum amount of power that you're going to make on your system. Look in the future, what could you possibly see yourself putting your engine through? For me, that was 600 horsepower. So I bought a 600, probably actually 750 horsepower uh, intercooler core. Now, the reason why I did that was because it happened to be the cheapest on eBay. At the time, of about $75. But times have changed, and it's more like $190 now. But you can still find an air to water intercooler uh, for about $90 to $100 that will handle about a 350-400 horsepower setup. Next, 
we're going to need some kind of a heat exchanger or radiator. This happens to be an oil cooler and it would work on a low horsepower application, uh, but not much beyond that. They do make really nice ones that are around this big. Um, they're heat exchangers is what they call them, and they're about that thin. Uh, they do a really great job of pulling heat out very quickly, but it's not really necessary unless you're making big power. And for me, what I did, because I needed something that was small, compact, and had uh, a decent amount of performance, was I used an actual motorcycle radiator and a um, dirt bike radiator. And I mounted it in the fender well. And that radiator happened to be about 45 to 50 bucks. You can still get them for about $60 now. But if you were to spend the money and get the actual good one, they're up to $200. So it's all going to be a matter of how much power you're trying to make. Now, the other thing about the radiator is that the size and efficiency of itself is going to determine what kind of use you're going to use for the vehicle. So if you're going to have a drag car that is just going to do uh, a 20, 20 second start up, warm up, pull, it's not going to generate that much heat. If you've got a street car, it'll generate a little bit more heat. But you don't need that radiator to be extremely efficient. In fact, most drag cars just use an ice box that they change over the ice every single run and they don't really have a large radiator and if they do they don't really need it. Now if you are going to be doing like a track day or sustained enduro something where you've got constant constant um, air inlet temperature that you're you're dropping down then you're going to need the large uh, heat exchanger. So now we've cooled the charge air and we've also cooled the water. We need to move that water around somehow with a pump. Now you can get the Bosch pump that everybody recommends that's running the Ford Lightning, um, the Porsche 944 Turbo, a bunch of other cars of that time frame and that's going to be more than enough for a long long time. Those are about $120 and there are some aftermarket versions of those for about $70 uh, but I don't think you need that much pump. I think you can get along with like a fountain pump like an exterior fountain pump for a water feature. There's no pressure in the radiator system and there is almost no temperature because the water that's going to be coming through here is going to be at 120, 130 degrees at the max. And if you don't have pressure, you don't have temperature, and you're even pushing the cold side with the pump. This pump's not going to be hot whatsoever. It's probably going to be pushing 80 to 90 degree ambient temperature water, slightly above. So I don't think you need that much. I'm pretty sure you can get it along with a very cheap pump. The fountain pumps you can find for $15, $20. I have one. I've kind of tested it in theory, but I was given a 944 turbo pump from my dad because he has spare parts like crazy, and why not? But there are some alternatives that I have put in the link in the description. Uh, that way you guys can have a cheap option. Next, we'll need some kind of reservoir system for holding the water. 
and I recommend going with the same basic kind of setup that we did on the radiator for a self-purging system. Take a look at this diagram. You can see this is very similar to our radiator setup for the self-purging system. The hot water is on the high point of the system and a small line comes off of that and goes to the tank. This is the purge portion and it allows for air to come out of the system. Now, a separate line from the bottom of the tank goes to a point in the cold side. And this is a self-cycling, self-bleeding system. Finally, I had my radiator tucked into my fender. And when I did that, I had no airflow. So I put a small fan on the radiator and I used a little cheap temperature controller. And this is what I was talking about last time in regards to what could potentially be a radiator fan controller as well. It's essentially what I did, but if you added a relay, I don't think I used a relay because there's almost no load on the small little fan that I had, but if you used a relay, there's no reason why you can't use it as a radiator fan controller and it was under $10. It's got a nice LCD screen and you can program whatever temperature the fan comes on. Or if you wanted it to go the opposite direction for whatever reason. But uh, it does both. Now I was exceptionally lazy whenever I put this system up. It came with a little sensor and I mounted that to the actual radiator, or to the actual intercooler itself with some duct tape. And they do make a sensor that is threaded. Um, I have that and my plan is to simply drill and tap the intercooler for that sensor. So, if you run the numbers, you'll see that you could do this for around $200 if you're really thrifty. But most people are probably going to be around the $350 range, and that's about where I would was if I would have to recreate it now for my $600 or 600 horsepower setup. Thanks for watching, and if you enjoyed this, please check out our other videos. We have a lot of really great content coming up, and if you have anybody that you know that might enjoy these videos please consider sharing. Appreciate all your guys' support, and we'll see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.